The Imperial Japanese Navy's Mutsuki was a seasoned destroyer when the Pacific War broke out. Built in the 1920s, she first saw combat against China, but nothing had truly prepared her to engage the imposing Allied fleet in the 1940s. On the first day of the war, Mutsuki was deployed to Wake Island, where she first combated the Americans and suffered the humiliation of the first Japanese defeat in the conflict. However, she eventually returned and captured the precious island. Soon, she would have to fight the Americans again in the dispute over Guadalcanal Island. Then, after a brief bombardment of U.S. positions at Henderson Field that left her impaired, the destroyer joined Rear Admiral Tanaka Raizo's fleet. On the morning of August 25, 1942, American aircraft pummeled a Japanese troop transport. As the destroyer approached to offer aid, another wave of hostile B-17s closed in. The captain, however, believed the aircraft would miss. Tragically, he was wrong. Destroyer 19 Mutsuki was the nameship of her class and was the first of a dozen first-class destroyers built for the Imperial Japanese Navy during the 1920s. She and her sisters were developed as an improvement of the earlier Kamikaze-class destroyers, and they were built at the Sasebo Naval Plant in Japan. Overall, the ships measured 102.4 meters in length by 9.16 meters in beam, while their draft was 2.96 meters. Mutsuki and her class had a displacement of 1,315 long tons at standard load, and at deep load, it rose to 1,772. The power plant consisted of two Parsons-geared steam turbines. Each engine used steam from four Kampon water tube boilers to drive a single propeller shaft. The turbines produced 38,500 shaft horsepower, enabling the destroyer to reach a top speed of 37.25 knots. With a load of 420 metric tons of fuel oil, the Mitsuki-class vessels had a range of 4,000 nautical miles at speeds no higher than 15 knots. As for the complement, each destroyer could accommodate 150 officers and crewmen. On the other hand, the destroyers were armed with four 12cm Type 3 guns in single mounts, arranged and numbered one through four from front to rear. The first was mounted forward of the superstructure, the second between the two funnels, and the last two were positioned back to back atop the aft superstructure. Moreover, the Mitsuki sisters became the first to be equipped with triple 61cm torpedo tubes arranged in two above water triple sets. One mount was fitted between the forward superstructure and the forward gun, while the other was placed between the aft funnel and aft superstructure. The ships carried four reload torpedoes for the tubes, 18 depth charges, and up to 16 mines. Curiously enough, they could also be fitted with minesweeping gear. The first ship was completed in March 1926 and simply commissioned as Destroyer 19. She would receive her permanent name two years later. Taste of War Throughout the 1930s, Mutsuki participated in several arduous exercises that helped prepare the Japanese Navy for war. She first saw combat in China during the first Shanghai incident in 1932, and was later involved in several other engagements in the Second Sino-Japanese War. After World War II broke out, Mitsuki played a prominent role as the flagship of Destroyer Division 30 under Destroyer Squadron 6 of the 4th Fleet during the simultaneous operations of December 7, 1941. One day after the attack on Pearl Harbor, Mutsuki departed from Kwajalein as part of the Wake Island Invasion Force. The destroyer's mission was to transport an advance landing party of the Japanese Special Naval Landing Forces, or SNLF. By the early morning of December 11th, the American garrison stranded on the island made an unexpected comeback, repulsing the first landing attempts by the advance party. The SNLF troops were supported by a considerable naval force comprising the light cruisers Yubari, Tenryu, and Tatsuta. The destroyers Yayoi, Hayate, Kisaragi, Oite, Asanagi, and Mutsuki. Two older Momi class vessels converted to patrol boats and two troop transports carrying 450 SNLF troops. Despite the Japanese naval superiority, the fleet suffered considerable losses during the first encounter, losing two precious vessels, Hayate and Kisaragi, to the U.S. Marine Corps coastal defense gunners and a handful of skilled pilots. Humiliated by the minuscule American force on wake, the Japanese force was forced to retreat before landing the SNLF elements. The encounter marked the first Japanese defeat of the war. Moreover, it was the only occasion in World War II when shore-based guns successfully thwarted an amphibious attack. 
However, when Mutsky returned on December 23rd with the second invasion force, once again carrying an SNLF advance party, the Americans would not be so lucky. Change of plans. After appeasing the remnant of the resistance on Wake Island, Mutsky returned to Kwajalein. Then, in January 1942, the destroyer was detached to escort a convoy in the naval base at Truk. While there, the ship was fitted with a sponson for a brand new pair of license-built 13.2mm Type 93 anti-aircraft machine guns on the forward side of her bridge. Subsequently, she received a new assignment to escort a troop convoy to Guam by the end of the month. There, she participated in the invasion of the Solomon Islands and spent the first months of 1942 covering the landings of Japanese forces during the invasion of Rabaul, New Ireland, and New Britain, codenamed Operation R. She then fulfilled a similar role during Operation SR, offering cover to the invasion forces in Leh and Salamaua on New Guinea. Towards the end of March, the destroyer was assigned as the flagship for Rear Admiral Masao Kanazawa, commander of the 8th Special Base Force, where she took part in the initial occupation of the Shortland Islands and Bougainville in the Solomons. By late April, she also supported the occupation of the Admiralty Islands. From March 7th to 8th, Mutsuki was slated to serve in Operation Mo, supporting the invasion force heading to Port Moresby during the Battle of the Coral Sea. But when the operation was cancelled, the destroyer remained near Rabaul. For several weeks, Mutsuki served as an escort for shipping traveling between Truk, Rabaul, and Palau until she was recalled to the Japanese mainland in July. Back home, the vessel underwent a brief refit in her native Sasebo. With repairs completed by July 12th, Mutsuki was once again sent to battle with the Imperial Japanese Navy 8th Fleet. And on August 24th, she would aid in the Japanese's first major attempt to recapture Guadalcanal. Dispute As part of the Guadalcanal campaign, the Allies were attempting to establish a foothold in the Solomon Islands, from where they could launch a more powerful offensive. However, the Japanese had already landed troops on Guadalcanal, and the Allies were determined to prevent them from establishing a permanent base on the invaluable island. Meanwhile, Japanese forces began gathering at Rabaul, roughly 1,050 kilometers northwest of the disputed territory. In response, the American Task Force 61, under Rear Admiral Frank Jack Fletcher, concentrated southeast of the island. The fleet included the carriers USS Enterprise and USS Saratoga, and the battleship USS North Carolina, which had the support of numerous cruisers and destroyers, as well as aerial support from land-based aircraft from Henderson Field. When the two fleets made contact on August 24th, the Battle of the Eastern Solomons officially began. Aircraft from Saratoga sank the light carrier Ryujo and severely damaged the seaplane carrier Chitose. In contrast, Enterprise endured a pummeling attack from dive bombers from the carrier Shokaku. Ablaze, the vessel was out of control, but auspiciously for her crew, the Japanese were entertained elsewhere following an erroneous position report. While the carriers on both sides engaged in an epic encounter that would tip the balance of the Pacific War, Mutsuki offered support by directly bombarding U.S. positions at Henderson Field. If she was able to neutralize the enemy stronghold, the Americans' aerial capabilities would be significantly weakened. Mutsuki and a small force of two heavy cruisers and two destroyers then headed to the field and opened fire with their main guns. Although the bombardment inflicted significant damage on the base, U.S. aircraft responded with a swift attack, forcing the Japanese to retreat. Mutsuki was maimed, but survived to continue her duties the following day. Once in a while, both sides withdrew their ships by midnight, and the next morning, a Japanese resupply convoy led by Rear Admiral Tanaka Raizo strove to force its way through to Guadalcanal. However, without the benefit of air cover, the convoy was left vulnerable to airstrikes from Henderson Field. The five vessels that had shelled the enemy base joined the convoy just in time to engage an incoming formation of 18 U.S. aircraft. The aerial strike severely damaged the flagship Jinsu, knocking the rear admiral unconscious. But another troop transport, Kiryu Maru, suffered the brunt of the raid. Severely damaged, the vessel sank as Mutsuki came to her rescue and moved alongside the crippled transport to save the survivors. As she rested immobile, a group of B-17s appeared on the horizon. Unfazed, the captain resolved to continue their rescue efforts, assuming the high-level bombers would drop their cargo with negligible accuracy. Against all odds, the bombers scored with pinpoint precision, and the destroyer was sunk. As Mitsuki went down, her captain hauled, quote, 
Even the B-17s could make a hit once in a while. Historian Richard B. Frank summed up the battle's significance, saying, quote, The Battle of the Eastern Solomons was unquestionably an American victory, but it had little long-term result. Indeed, Tanaka retired, only to return with his infamous Tokyo Express, which would ferry tens of thousands of Japanese troops and tons of vital supplies to Guadalcanal under the Allies' noses for several months to come. Thank you for watching our video. Don't miss out on more epic encounters from modern history by subscribing to Dark Seas and the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels. And show your support by hitting that like button and clicking the bell icon to be notified of our latest content. We publish new videos regularly, so stay tuned.